respiration in organisms. Our body is a complex living machine. For our various activities, we need a lot of energy. You are reading this book, which also requires energy. Right from blinking of the eye, digesting food, walking, running, etc., all the body functions or processes need expenditure of energy. We get our regular supply of energy from food we eat. Did you know that in the body, food gets converted to energy with the help of air we breathe? Energy from food Have you noticed people taking a brisk walk or jog in the morning? Why do they prefer the morning hours for these activities? This is because the cool morning air is denser and hence has more oxygen. It is also relatively dust free. Thus, they feel refreshed and energetic. Where does this energy come from? The food that we eat has energy stored in it. Jogging or taking a brisk walk makes a person to breathe faster compared to normal times of the day. Thus, more oxygen-rich air is taken into our lungs. The blood passing by the lungs takes up oxygen from the air and leaves behind carbon dioxide. In the cells, the digested food is oxidized to release carbon dioxide and energy that is logged in food. This energy is made available to all the cells to carry out the biological functions. The release of energy as described above by breakdown of food in the presence of oxygen or otherwise is called respiration. Breathing and Respiration The term respiration combines two processes. Breathing Breathing is the physical act of taking in air which is rich in oxygen into our body and releasing carbon dioxide rich air out of the body through the nose. Breathing in is called inhalation and breathing out is known as exhalation. Respiration It is the chemical process of breakdown of food in the presence of oxygen to produce energy. This takes place in all the body cells. Differences between breathing and respiration Breathing, respiration Number 1 it is a physical process. It is a chemical process. Number two, it takes place outside the cells. It takes place within the cell. Number three, it involves taking in of oxygen rich air and giving out of carbon dioxide rich air. It involves a series of chemical reactions where glucose is oxidized, releasing carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Number four, energy is consumed and no enzymes are involved. Energy is released and several respiratory enzymes are involved. Rate of breathing. The number of times a person breathes per minute is termed as breathing rate. One breath involves one inhalation and one exhalation. The rate of breathing is influenced by factors such as emotional or mental state, physical activity and metabolic rate. It is adjusted to suit the needs of the body in different situations. In normal cases, the heart beats 60 to 100 times per minute while the breathing rate is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Breathing at rest Breathing is usually slowest when the body is at rest or asleep. At this time, only the essential muscles to hold our body position, those involved in digestion and muscles that help in breathing 
are at work. Average breathing rate at rest varies with age. A newborn baby breathes 50 to 60 times a minute. A four-year-old child breathes 25 times a minute, while an adult breathes only 12 to 18 times a minute. Abnormally slow breathing rate is a medical condition called bradypnea. Breathing during exercise. As we start to exercise, our breathing becomes faster and the rate increases to almost 50 to 60 times per minute in order to get more oxygen into the body. At the same time, our heart starts to beat faster. This pushes the blood through the blood vessels faster, allowing it to carry more oxygen to body's cells. It speeds up the breakdown of food in the cells, thereby releasing more energy. Calculate the breathing rate of members of different age groups of your family. You need to count the number of breaths taken in per minute for every individual. Once during their sleep and the second time when they are doing some physical activity. Write your findings in the table given as follows. Breathing rate for people at different age. Family members. Breathing rate at rest during some physical activity. Infant. 2 years old. 8 years old. Adolescent, adult, very old. Compare these findings, you will observe that the breathing rate differs amongst different age groups. Aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Depending on whether oxygen is used in the process or not, respiration is of two types aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration. This type of respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen where food glucose is broken down into carbon dioxide and water and the energy is released which is stored as ATP, energy carrying molecules. Glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water plus energy 38 ATPs. This type of respiration is carried out in most of the plants and animals. Anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen. It is a normal feature in certain microscopic organisms like bacteria and yeast. The organisms that can survive in the absence of oxygen are called anaerobes. In the absence of oxygen, glucose partially breaks down into carbon dioxide and ethyl alcohol, ethanol. The energy released during anaerobic respiration is much less than in aerobic respiration. Glucose gives ethyl alcohol plus carbon dioxide plus energy to ATP. The process in which microorganisms like yeast and bacteria respire anaerobically to produce alcohol and carbon dioxide from food is called fermentation. Differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration. Number one, it occurs in the presence of oxygen. It occurs in the absence of oxygen. Number two, it involves complete oxidation of glucose to produce carbon dioxide and water. It involves incomplete oxidation of glucose and produces ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. Number three, large amount of energy is produced 38 ATP molecules during aerobic respiration. Comparatively, less energy is produced 2 ATP molecules during non-aerobic respiration. Number 4, it occurs throughout the life, example in humans, fish and birds. It occurs for short period, example 
in bacteria and yeast. In human muscle cells, it occurs when oxygen level falls during vigorous physical activity. Most of you play outdoor games like cricket, football and basketball in the school playground. When you play these games for long hours due to vigorous movements, you experience muscle cramps and fatigue. Have you wondered why you get these cramps? This is because your muscle cells respire anaerobically for a short time. The demand for energy is high, but the supply of oxygen at cellular level to produce energy happens to be less. Glucose, instead of breaking completely into carbon dioxide and water, is partially broken down to produce lactic acid, the cause of muscle cramps. Glucose, in absence of oxygen, gives lactic acid plus energy to ATP. Muscle cells Breathing in animals The basic process of respiration is similar in all living beings and results in release of energy from breakdown of food. In animals like cockroach, earthworm and fish, there are specialized organs that help in breathing through air holes. Insects like cockroaches, grasshoppers and bees have special air holes on their body surface called spiracles. These spiracles are connected to a network of air tubes inside the body of insects called trachea. The smaller branches of the trachea are called tracheoles that allow diffusion of respiratory gases to the cells and tissues. Air enters an insect's body through these spiracles and reaches the entire body through the trachea and tracheoles. Oxygen is thus directly absorbed by the body cells through simple diffusion and carbon dioxide is sent out through the spiracles. Through moist skin Animals such as earthworm have a moist and slimy skin. Exchange of gases takes place through the surface of the skin that are richly supplied with blood capillaries. Air dissolves on the mucus of the skin. So earthworms must stay moist to breathe. If they dry out, they suffocate. In every segment of the body of the earthworm, these capillaries are connected to the main blood vessels. The thin wall capillaries absorb oxygen from the skin and return the carbon dioxide to the skin by diffusion. Through gills, aquatic animals such as fish have special organs called gills which are adapted to take up the oxygen dissolved in water. Each gill consists of gill arch, which bears a double row of thin walled filaments, gill filaments that are richly supplied with blood capillaries. Water entering the mouth flows over the gills. The blood in the capillaries absorbs oxygen from water and gives out carbon dioxide by the process of diffusion. Simple unicellular organisms like amoeba and paramecium take in oxygen directly from water and give out carbon dioxide through diffusion. Through lungs, mammals such as cat, dog, monkey and humans breathe through lungs. Amphibians like frogs also have lungs. When they are on land, they breathe through their lungs, but when they are in water, they breathe through their moist skin as well. Respiratory system in humans. Human beings have a more extensive and developed respiratory system. This is because our metabolic rate is high 
and so is the energy demand. Since our body cannot store oxygen, we need to breathe day and night to move air into and out of our system. The respiratory system of human beings includes respiratory system, respiratory tract, nostrils and nasal passage, pharynx, trachea, bronchi and bronchioles, alveoli, respiratory organs, lungs, respiratory tract, nostrils and nasal passage. Nostrils are a pair of slits that open into left and right nasal chambers. The nasal chambers have a lining of hairs which trap dust particles and germs present in the air and filter them. It is richly supplied with blood vessels that warm the incoming air. The sticky mucus lining of the nasal chamber moistens the air and filters dust particles. Pharynx is a common passage at the back of the mouth for air and food. Air enters the front tube called the windpipe. The entrance of the food pipe and the windpipe is guarded by a stiff flap-like structure, the epiglottis. It helps in controlling and directing food to the food pipe and air along the windpipe respectively. It opens during breathing but closes the passage of windpipe while swallowing or drinking, thus preventing the food from entering the lungs. If food were to go down the windpipe, one would choke. Trachea. The pharynx leads to trachea, a tube lying in front of the food pipe. It passes through the neck and extends into the chest cavity. Its wall is supported by C-shaped cartilaginous rings, bronchi and bronchioles. At its lower end, Trachea splits into two bronchi that lead to the lungs on their respective side. Each bronchus further divides and subdivides into smaller tubes known as bronchioles. Alveoli. Each bronchiole ends in tiny air sacs called alveoli. The exchange of gases takes place here. Each lung of an adult human contains about 300 to 400 million alveoli. Alveoli have very thin walls and are richly supplied with blood capillaries. As we breathe, the oxygen present in air goes into the blood and carbon dioxide present in the blood moves into the alveoli. The exchange of gases takes place by the process of diffusion Blood has a red colored protein called hemoglobin that binds with oxygen and forms oxyhemoglobin. It is carried by the blood to all the parts. Respiratory organs, lungs. These are a pair of respiratory organs that are spongy bag-like structures lying in the chest cavity on either side of the heart. The left lung is two lobed and slightly smaller than the right lung which is three lobed. The two lungs are protected by the flexible rib cage and sternum in the front and the vertebral column at the back. Just beneath the lungs is a dome shaped muscular sheet called diaphragm. The coordinated action of diaphragm and rib cage helps in the mechanism of drawing oxygen rich air, inhalation, and expelling the carbon dioxide rich air exhalation. Mechanism of breathing, inhalation or breathing in, exhalation or breathing out. Inhalation, the sternum is pulled out, the rib cage is pulled upward and outward. The diaphragm muscles contract and they are flattened. The volume of chest cavity increases leading to its enlargement. Oxygen-rich air is forced into the lungs 
through the nose. Exhalation. The sternum is pulled in. The ribs are also pulled downward and inward. The diaphragm muscles relax and return to its dome shape. This reduces the volume of the chest cavity. Air rich in carbon dioxide is forced out of the lungs. Breathing, inhalation and exhalation. Organs or parts, breathing, inhalation, exhalation. Sternum ribs, pulled out, pulled in. Ribs, up and out, down and in. Diaphragm, flattens, dome shaped. Volume inside chest and lungs increase, decreases. Air flows in, move in line of air flow. Have you observed someone sleeping on his back? You will notice a rhythmic up and down movement of the chest. This movement is more pronounced when the person has come to you after a short run. This movement, as you have learned, happens because of expansion of the ribcage, inhalation and its contraction, exhalation. It will be fun to measure the size of the chest during inhalation and exhalation. Effect of breathing on chest size of classmates. Name, chest size during inhalation, chest size during exhalation, difference. Number 1, Mohit, 34 inches, 30 inches, 4 inches. Deep breathing exercises and yoga help to improve our lung capacity which is very good for our health. Respiration in plants. Plants use atmospheric oxygen to break down glucose into carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy. The majority of gas exchange in plants takes place by simple diffusion process through small openings in the leaves called stomata. Stomata can thus be compared to our nose. Exchange of gases also takes place through lenticels that are present on the stem of woody plants. Sugar plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Roots of plants buried underground need constant supply of air. This is because like other living cells, the root cells also need to respire, releasing carbon dioxide and energy. Loosening the soil creates tiny air spaces around the soil particles. So plant root hairs can easily take in oxygen trapped between the soil particles. Oxygen diffusing into the root hairs is passed into the neighboring root cells. Carbon dioxide is diffused out into the soil. Some plants with submerged roots develop aerial roots for breathing. Thus, in plants, all living cells of root, stem and leaf take in oxygen independently and give out carbon dioxide. Respiration occurs at a much slower rate as compared to animals. There is little transport of gases from one part of the plant to other. Signs in the vicinity. Nostrils are the doorway to the respiratory system. That is why it is important that we wear a clean mask to protect our lungs from dust and various other pathogens such as bacteria, viruses and fungal spores. We should never touch the outer surface of the mask because it can be contaminated. Domestic cooking in ovens by burning wood or other biomass is very dangerous. It emits harmful air pollutants and fine particles that can enter the lungs and bloodstream. It also leads to formation of air traps in the lungs. Air traps happen when a part of the lung is unable to efficiently exchange air. An easy way to judge if the fish you are buying is fresh or not is to check its gills. If the gill is bright red, 
That means the fish is a fresh catch. The gills of an old catch gradually turn dark brownish. Other pointers to a stale fish are cloudy sunken eyes and dull skin. Doing strenuous exercise after a gap leads to lactic acid cramps. Doing warm up, staying hydrated and breathing deeply during exercise can prevent lactic acid formation. Massaging and hot compress reduces pain as it increases the blood flow in the area, thus providing the much needed oxygen. Lactic acid breaks into carbon dioxide and water. The lungs have three regions, front, middle and back. The back part has maximum blood supply. When lying chest up, air supply to the back is less. In the prone posture, the heart rests on the breastbone, giving space to the back lungs to expand. This improves oxygenation and lung capacity. Prone posture involves lying face down with the chest raised and breathing rapidly.